sisters, uh, we left off with uh, Brother Randy. He was talking about Willie Lynch. Brother Randy, kick it. Yeah, well, as I was starting to say <clears throat> about the Willie Lynch before we had to take our intermission. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we don't even realize that really li we are living Willie Lynch as we speak. Yes. Now, I'm going to give you a few facets of the Willie Lynch letter that make that are of particular importance. First, the reversal of roles. Mm. Those of you who believe in the Bible believe that man is the head of the household. And that man is to his job is to provide and protect. So if you live in a Judeo Christian society <coughs> and you are a male and not allowed, I didn't say wouldn't. I said not allowed <laughs> to earn the money to take care of your family. According to this society where we live at, you are less than a man. Mm. Now, so once he took your masculinity, I want to say that that's his words. That's his uh, take on it. When I say that he took your masculinity, nobody can take your masculinity and you give it away. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that according to him and his definition of man, you got to remember, when you're in a country where people own the language, they define it and define things the way that that's in the best interest for them. Mm -hmm. So, they say they bred you like horses and livestock. They never allowed you to commit to your female partner because he had ultimate domain over you and her. That's right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you couldn't provide because you were a slave. You couldn't protect because you would have died. <laughs> so, you would protect one time. And you wouldn't depict no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, since you can't provide and protect, now your woman is out there with that wolf. Hmm. That same wolf that used to come in your slave cabin. Mm -hmm. That same wolf <coughs> that used to mess with her in the house when she was uh, 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 performing her uh, uh, domestic chores. Huh. That same guy, when he got her in his workplace, <coughs> He did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, after he reversed the roles, see this is a self-perpetuating situation because if you look at the paradigm in our community, our women <coughs> are the head of household. They raise the girls to be yeah. in, to be independent, mm -hmm. and they raise the boys to be dependent. Mm -hmm. uh. See. When he don't, and then she raises him to be non-threatening to white authority. Right. He's not supposed to buck. Now she's not doing this out of no sinister situation. She's doing this because they have taken the, the diabolical individuals that they are. They have taken a mother's love and twisted it to the point where. She is, she is, her ultimate goal is to protect her young and her <coughs> offspring. Right. Anything that might harm them, they, she warns them about that. Mm -hmm. And they told her when she got off the boat, she, they showed her. You see, you, you heard, you, you read what they did to the brother that was uh -huh. strong and, and rebellious. What mother would deliver her, tell her son to follow that example mm -hmm. and, and end up the same way? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So they made the man, the man, what? Physically strong because he needed to work mm -hmm. and mentally weak. Uh -huh. That's what we have the same paradigm in our system. We, and we live the way that these people taught us to live. Mm -hmm. We got a, we got a, or we got a, 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 a culture that said might makes right. Mm -hmm. we, there's three intelligent brothers in this room. We, never, we would never think about raising our hands to each other in a debate. Mm -hmm. However, <clears throat> on the street you get in the debate, 
First thing out of individual bow, if he don't agree with you, the way I whoop your ass. <laughs> okay, now let's just examine that for a minute. If you whoop me, I whoop my ass. Does that make what I'm saying less true? <laughs> right. All it does is satisfy your immediate gratification to shut me up. Mm -hmm. It don't make it no less true. Hmm. Mike Meeks right. We value style over substance. Mm. See, my big mellow over here, he's laid back, he's too intelligent, this, that, and other. I'm a little more animated. Mm -hmm. So you gonna gravitate towards me. I'm the I'm, I'm cool dude on it. He on top of the business, man. Dude, raw business. <laughs> ain't nothing, he ain't no ain't, his what he said ain't no less true than what I'm saying. Right. It's my delivery. See, it's my delivery. I'm funny. I'm aggressive. So you, I'm, cause I'm a public speaker by by trade. That's what I do. So of course I'm gonna be good, eloquent speaker. But that don't make me no belt more right than the brothers in this room. Hmm. I'm saying to you, uh, you. And, now, the other part of the Willie Lynch letter, because I'm going to let my brother get in here, we're running short of time. Yeah. The other part of Willie Lynch's letter that we have to know <coughs> was the part about controlling the language. Mm. If I know that hour don't mean hour, what the man say? You'll be in your bed. If you teach him how to read, you give him the chance. And then they told everybody in the society to join in and make you feel inferior. Mm. Because you will pass that on to your offspring. Now, Carter G. Wilson said it best. Teacher, excuse me, you, if you control a man's mind, and you control his thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. That's right. If you teach a man to go in the back door all his life, if there ain't no back door, he'll cut one <laughs> for his own benefit <laughs> because, right. his, because his education <laughs> makes it necessary. Mm -hmm. We go to an education system that is teaching us to be workers. Mm. Ain't nobody ever told you to be an owner. Mm. Mm -hmm. They have always wanted us to look up to the workers. Mm -hmm. Look, that's why they publicize those big contracts for athletes. Yeah. But they're not telling you if I can pay you 120 million, I'll probably make it 500 million. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm. I don't want to be Shaq. I want to be the motherfucker that pay Shaq. Right, the owner. Mm -hmm. See, Michael Jordan got out of his body. <laughs> he owned the Bobcats, so he ain't love with Michael Jordan no more. Mm -hmm. See, if he didn't own, he was been with good graces. And he come there and get his uh, accolades from the Hall of Fame and <laughs> stand up and take a few pictures. And going on back in the subset like Bill Russell and some of these other people do. Oh, they icons. Yeah. Ambassadors of the game. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to turn it over to my brother because I know he's going to fill in the blanks. I, I, I had to give you the quick version. One day we're going to sit down here and we're really going to do this midnight with this uh, what it makes left. <laughs> and uh, when I get through with y'all, y'all understand. See, because look, they've taught you to hate yourself. That's the coldest thing they ever right. did to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, because <coughs> the reason, the, 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 the fact that you hate yourself prevents you from liking me. Yeah. From from dealing with people who, uh, uh, that, that are for your benefit. Yeah. See, you do know, I want everybody to understand this, you do know <coughs> that racism is merely a figment of black people's imagination. You do know that. Mm. Oh, what you, you saying? What you saying? I'm saying this here. 
When did we ever complain about racism and they said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> they ain't. <laughs> I don't care what happened. Now they trying to tell us Trayvon Martin didn't have nothing to do with racism. <laughs> <laughs> they really trying to tell us this here. <laughs> you got brothers and sisters out there actually believe it now. And yeah. you and, and what's what's Ooh. so and what's so <laughs> and what's so bad about it is you got ignorant mother individuals <laughs> who a, a parent. See, we got a group of parents out there. All they do is say Polly want a cracker. Nah. If the white man say it, got to be true. Mm -hmm. If you hate yourself, look, I did some time in prison <coughs> for a crime I didn't commit, but we ain't going to go into that. What I want to talk to you about is this here, the mindset. I'm an activist brother. We went and found out that there was a new policy coming down the pipe. We're educating everybody and trying to prepare them for this new change that's about to come about. One of the brothers go out and ask the guards, because he worked in the in the uh, in the pod area where he was with the guards, you know, not a lot of the time on his ship, and they was cool. Now, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> so, rather than take the word of a fellow convict who looked like him, he went and asked a European guard whether, in fact, what we found out was the truth. Now, if they wanted you to know, they'd already <laughs> put it out there and posted it, right? <laughs> so, obviously, he going to deny that this, this 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 policy or procedure or whatever the situation is, it, 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 it exists. I'm saying to you, what I'm saying, what I'm talking to you, I told you that story to say this. The man, the, he believed his enemy mm -hmm. over his friend. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the same situation as him who has no reason to lie. Mm -hmm. You're going to validate what I said by asking the individual with the key to your fucking cell. <laughs> that has got to be the stupidest shit I've heard. Excuse my language. <laughs> that is, that is uh, to me, <laughs> what kind of mental mentality is that? <laughs> You're going to ask your enemy if they plan to implement something against you that's going to be uh, a hardship. <laughs> 